My Antweight Vertical Spinner, this is a party, has a few problems with it at this point. The primary one right now being that it is just way too slow. I am having circles driven around me every single fight and that makes it very, very difficult to win. Thankfully, Turnabot is here to help us solve that problem. Turnabot have sent through a Malinky Nano and two different flavors of their N10 drive motors, 1200 RPM and 1650 RPM. So these are some very, very fast motors. Now the Malinky Nano, for those of you who don't know, is an ESC and a receiver all in one. So this cuts a bit of weight. These are N10s, which are slightly smaller and slightly lighter than the N20s that I have been using, which are these ones from DF Robot. They have an ESC on the back of them. And as you can see, they are slightly longer. They are slightly heavier. I don't think that the DF Robot ESCs put full battery voltage into the motor. They seemingly move slower than they should do for the voltage that they are given. So. These are going to be a massive upgrade in speed, not only because they are geared faster, but also because they're actually giving full battery voltage. Obviously, the other advantage here is if we do manage to save a little bit of weight with these new components, we can redo the armor package. Because as you can see, we keep breaking things, but we won't know that until we have actually wired up a brand new wiring harness. Compared to some of the other soldering jobs I've done recently, this is a fairly simple one. We're gonna solder some connectors to these brand new N10s, and then to the Malinky Nano, we're connecting power, other connectors, and an ESC connector. Okay, and we are all wired up over here. I've also added some hot glue to all of the joints just to make sure that things don't fatigue and also that things don't short out. We already have our old wiring system on the scale. It's 30 grams. So let's see how much weight we've saved by moving over to the Malinky and these really cool, really fast N10s. That's 24 grams. That means we have saved six grams. Now that may not sound like a lot, but in a robot that is only 150 grams to begin with, six grams is a lot of weight to play with, which is great because that means that not only are we going to be faster with this new electronic setup, I can also put more effort and more weight into the armor package and hopefully have a chassis survive an entire event. That would be really, really nice. I am starting to run out of this very fluoro green that I love to print my ant weights in. Speaking of printing a ant weight chassis, I do need to do that. So I'm going to throw something together in CAD. We're going to print that out and uh, grab it. So I have really used the weight that I had to play with here. I have gone with some detachable wedgelets and I've given the game away because I didn't bring a full set. I have printed multiple of all of the wedges and actually also of the chassis itself. So we've got one chassis here and one chassis here with just a ton more wedges in it. And this is gonna be really, really cool because in the old chassis, you can see it was this bottom edge that always got broken and busted up. So by swapping those out for TPU, that's what these are. I can like fold these in half and let them go and they spring straight back into shape. They should be more resilient, but also if they take damage, I can now just swap them out for one of the giant pile of them that we have. Uh, and we've got two chassis, so if we do something catastrophic like break through the back armor, we can swap over into a new chassis. But these now need our motor mounts glued in, much like the previous version. We're going to use PCBs in here. I doubled up on the last version, but I don't think this is necessary, so we're going to do a single one here. Also, because I'm just a little bit worried that these new wedges are going to add a little bit more than six grams. But the next thing to do is to epoxy these in. Okay, it is time to put this robot together. So we're just gonna wire these motors up. These I'm probably gonna have to work out uh, if they are actually in the correct orientation later and re-plug them in. But that is part of the reason I use plugs on my wires so I can just swap the motor wires rather than having to reprogram my controller, which is good because that way I can keep one control system for all of my robots. 
I'm gonna throw these guys in here. It's gonna be fairly easy. These, this pack down should be quite straightforward. We get to put our motors in. Ah, uh, yeah, this is gonna be good. This is exactly what I want. And then a couple of screws will hold that down. Okay, that's most of our electronics in, or at least that's our drive electronics in. That's really good. Now I can throw on some wheels, which should be fairly easy, although these are quite a tight fit. So I need to support the motor from the back as I push these on, because otherwise they will slide out. Perfect. And then we're gonna throw on our wedges because I realized that I've got a screw in here which is gonna be in underneath the weapon motor. So we need to actually get that one in first before we put the weapon motor on, otherwise we're never gonna to get to it. But we're not quite done. I've left a tiny little screw hole in the back of each of these wedges as well, just to be really sure that they're not gonna go anywhere. So we're gonna throw a screw in from the front, because this way they definitely can't come back off. Next thing to do, of course, is to put the weapon motor on, which just goes on our nice PCB front plate. So normally here, I would just bolt everything together. I'd spend a little bit of time fiddling with the weapon system to get everything to work the way I want it to, but I am impatient right now and I want to see this thing drive. So let's do that instead. Three, two, one. Ha! Okay, so it can drive, and it can drive really quickly. In fact, it was a mistake to do it without the weapon on because what was mostly happened was, whoo, and it was just wheeling all over the place. It is quick, but I don't think uncontrollably so. That's one of the things I was a little bit worried about. These N20s that I put in here are 1200 RPM. Uh, and I got sent some 1200 and some 1650, and I'm glad I went with the 1200. I think the 1650 may have been a little uncontrollable, but let me know in the comments down below if you think I should try out the even faster motors in this thing. The really cool thing about these motors too is that they are engraved with what speed on them actually is, so you never actually mix them up, which is gonna be very, very handy moving forwards. Anyway, it is time to put a weapon on and hit something. Okay, that was brutal. Just the added speed, even in that tiny little test box, meant that the hits that we were getting were colossal. Those were much, much better than the last time we upgraded This Is A Party and put PCBs in it. I did just notice that the wedge got worn away a little bit. That is wild. We also uh, could use a slightly heavier weapon. We're still managing to wheelie with these very, very fast motors in here. And I think we can fit it as well. I weighed the robot and it is like five grams underweight. So I can throw a bigger weapon on here and I might even do that before the next fight, but we won't do that in this particular video. 
Uh, I am very, very happy with this upgrade. This thing is so much faster, but still actually decently controllable. I was worried that going to this kind of speed, I was gonna be very uncontrolled, but that worked out pretty well, I reckon. Uh, a big thanks again to Turnabots for the N20s and the Melinki Nano that are now in This Is A Party. If you want any of those, there'll be links in the description down below. Anyway, that is it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.